Hi, my name is Doug Dedman. I'm the president and principal of DBM Systems. Welcome back to our series on quantifying the benefits for SNOP. In this series, I'm exploring some of the hard benefits you should expect out of SNOP. The goal is to help you understand how SNOP can deliver these expected benefits and provide a way for you to calculate the ROI or return on, on investment of your implementing SNOP for your organization. If you haven't already, go back and watch the first video in the series. The link is below. In that video, I introduced how generally SNOP can be linked to these business outcomes. I also introduced an expected improvement table that comes from research by Tom Wallace, the author of the Sales and Operations Planning How-To Handbook. Based on his research, this table uh, that Tom provided has high and low values for each of these benefits and an expected or middle outcome as well. I'll be using these numbers to walk through some numbers for each one of the benefits in these videos. All right, so for today, I'm going to look at operational efficiency. How much should you expect SNOP to improve your operational efficiency? Tom's table provides a kind of a wide range for this. It's between two and 33% for improving plant efficiency and somewhere between 20 and 50% for reducing manufacturing downtime. Now, a little caveat here. I'm kind of looking at both of these together because I do see them as related and you'll hopefully see why I, I think that way after I explain. So, where should you expect to land on these two metrics? In order to determine this, it's helpful to look at what we mean by efficiency in order to set the table. Operational efficiency means using your resources, equipment, people, and inventory, and money or investment in an optimized way to better serve the organization. Now, in order to avoid double dipping on the benefits of improved operational efficiency, I'm gonna focus on the return from better usage of people and equipment and not on inventory, as I cover that in another video in this series on inventory reduction. So, what is the linkage between operational efficiency and SNOP? In the introduction video to this series, I introduced the three concepts that SNOP delivers. Number one, improving the predictability of demand. Number two, improving the predictability of supply. And number three, improving your use of buffers, inventory lead time and flex capacity. These three areas are what ultimately results in the financial benefit from the process. All three of these play into improving your overall efficiency. Predictability of demand and supply will support improved planning. The more accurate your plans are and the longer the horizon they cover, this will introduce stability into your operation. Stability results in efficiency. Ultimately, it means that you are in control. You will still have volatility in demand and supply but you are managing the predictable as much as possible. Reducing the impact of volatility is what those buffers are for. Inventory provides a buffer for unexpected orders that come in or to cover demand when something unexpected happens during production. Adjusting lead times can also provide a buffer by leveling demand or pushing demand out to support planning activities. Flex capacity Ser serves a very similar role. These three buffers also provide the ability to manage mismatches between customer expectations, such as lead time and the reality of supply lead times. We can't build it for you when you place an order, but we have to have it in stock to meet that your same day delivery. That's our inventory. Ultimately, SNOP will help you plan better allowing you to better level load your resources. And for those that study lean, the more predictable and constant production can be, the more efficient. So let's look at how to calculate potential savings from SNOP related to efficiency. I'm gonna break this down into two areas, reducing overtime and reducing downtime. Both of these results can be improved by using SNOP to better level load your operations. So let's dig in. 
I'll start with overtime. I like to start with this one because the math is fairly straightforward, assuming you're able to get your historical overtime cost. Most likely, you'll have this as a direct labor number, and this is fine. In my company example, I've been using for this video series, my company of 100 million in sales has a cost of goods sold of 60 million. 10% of that is direct labor, or $6 million. In addition, we're running about 12% overtime, or about three days per month. This has a direct labor cost of 720,000 per year. By better planning and level loading the plant, we should be able to reduce this overtime by at least 15%. That's coming out of the table. This would represent just over 100,000 or 108,000 per year of savings. This is on direct labor only. If I applied an overhead to this, an additional 10%, that on the total cost of goods sold, that savings would be doubled up to 216,000. I've picked the 15% for reduction, but you can do a little bit of a deeper dive into your, the reasons for overtime in your company and estimate the benefits of better planning on this number. So now let's look at inefficiency due to manufacturing downtime. Downtime can be caused by various factors, excessive changeovers, material shortages, or production troughs where there isn't enough demand to fill your facility. Once again, through better planning, these downtimes can be reduced. If you have the data, it's helpful to divide it between these different causes of downtime. Annual changeover costs can be calculated by looking at the labor cost of changeover plus the material cost multiplied by the number of changeover per days times the number of production days. Through better planning, if you can reduce these by 10 or 15%, you can calculate the plant efficiency saving. The cost of downtime due to material shortages and production troughs is a little bit harder to calculate. If you keep good production statistics from a line, you can use this information. Determine the full cost of the line, labor and overhead, per hour, then multiply this times the number of hours the line is down per year. Now, consider how much could this be reduced by better planning. Once again, I started with that 15% number from Tom Wallace's chart. Since I don't have the details for my company between the changeovers and other reasons, I'm just going to use this simple calculation. Estimated downtime not including downtime for preventative uh, maintenance per month is two days, or roughly about 10%. That downtime percent applies to my direct labor and variable overhead, which in my company is 12 million per year. This means that downtime is costing our facility about 1.2 million per year. Now, if we apply the percentage reduction, we can then potentially reduce this by 15%, that's an annual cost savings of 180,000. So now if we add these two calculations together, 216,000 for savings due to reducing overtime, plus 180,000 uh, for my uh, inefficiency, this gives me a total annual savings of 396,000 or roughly $400,000. Typically, I like to time phase these returns over three years, as it takes some time to implement the SNOP process and get to the benefits. I use an annual return of 20% in the first year, 80% in the second, and 100% in the third when the process is fully implemented. This would mean a savings of 80,000 in year one, 320,000 in year two, and the full 40,000 in year three. Once again, you need to make these numbers your own including what percentages would be possible for savings. Hopefully this has given you an idea of how this can work looking at the uh, efficiency of your operations. This single measurement may not be enough to justify your SNOP for your organization, but hopefully the video provides you a good starting point for linking the quantifiable returns you can achieve through SNOP. Stay tuned for the next videos to dig further into where else SNOP can bring significant benefits to your organization. Thanks for watching today's video. Subscribe to our channel for more on implementing SNOP. You can learn more about how DBM can take your process to the next level by visiting our website, 
www.dbmsys.com. Thank you and take care.